This is Servant of Dawn, the deck I hit King of Games with this season. Back during my previous tier list video, I rated it as a very powerful deck, and I got a lot of comments about it. Nobody has ever seen this deck on the ladder or in tournaments, and for good reason. When you're running a bunch of cards like Guy the Fierce Knight and Flame Cerebrus, the deck does not seem very appealing. Renegade is a longtime viewer and a friend of the channel, and they have been giving me a lot of trash on this deck, calling Dragon's Grace, another skill nobody plays, even better. So today, we are playing a best of five against each other to decide which deck is truly superior. Uh -huh. I guess, realistically, I probably should be setting a stream delay since you are around and could stream snipe me, you know, always finding where my traps are. But I'm not really that concerned about it. My deck is so much better, I'll win no matter how much stream sniping is going on. Um, uh, we have a pretty interesting opening hand. And I think we are just going to go ahead and set a few monsters. Let's see what Renegade is up to. They have set a card and appear to be thinking. So I think their opening hand must not have been that good. Setting a few monsters face down. Very interesting. Um, oh, but it is, of course, Ancient Arise Dragon right on cue. However, this is not even enough to clear my whole board. Ancient Arise Dragon going up to 3,000 and losing one of those Dragias. Unless they are running Monster Reincarnation or Phoenix Dragon, that is one boss down. I do have a Pock Pockachu, but unfortunately, with only Silver Wolf in the graveyard for Beast, I am not going to be able to use it. However, we do draw a few interesting cards here. Let's go ahead and bring out Currybot and just immediately go for the big Tribute Summon. Both of us are going to be able to use Multistrike Dragon Dragius, but mine is actually going to be putting in a ton of value this turn. Notably, Ancient Arise Dragon is only at 2400, so when I use Guy the Fierce Knight and boost itself up to 29, you can really see the power of this deck. If they have Widespread Ruin, Dragius is going to be able to clear both monsters. If they have the Barrier, it's not going to be enough to stop me. Um, and if they have Music Princess's Recital, I should attack with Dragius first to clear one. Then, if they manage to stop this attack, I can still get in it directly. We take a huge immediate lead, bringing them all the way down to 2,000 on a turn that would have been able to, to play around just about any trap card in the game. Servant of Dawn, off to a great start. Let's see if Renegade is able to make the comeback. If they actually do manage to land the deck's main game plan this turn, we could be in trouble. A2900 Multi-Strike Drag Multi Dragon Dragius would be able to clear both of my monsters and deal some damage while letting whatever else Renegade has in store for us swing directly. As long as Dragius is attacking my attack position monsters, the drawback of the skill does not matter. We know, I believe... Um... Oh, okay, we see the monster reincarnation, and what will they be getting? Is, will it be Dragius, Ancient Arise, or simply a low-level monster to unbrick? With the tiger going down, this is actually pretty interesting. That is their first normal beast, so they are setting up for a Pocket Pocket Chew. And just as predicted, we see it immediately coming down to recycle another monster. This does let them bring out two bosses this turn, and with the... Silver Wolf that they added back to their hand, they're going to be able to debuff Dragius down to 2300, allowing another Dragius to take advantage of it and get over both of my monsters. And now we are the ones on the back foot, especially if they manage to bring out another Dragius. We see two tributes, and Phoenix Dragon's effect activates. They do indeed have another Dragius in the graveyard, and that's going to be 5000 plus 600 damage. No, 5,400 damage. Dragon's Grace is making an incredible comeback without even using the skill's effect. Let's see what we draw. Unfortunately, this is not going to be enough. So, Renegade takes the first game. Let's go ahead and make sure a Pock Pockachu is set up for next turn. Throw down three monsters and set. Ancient Arise Dragon is coming out. Maybe they were considering simply setting monsters and passing. Ancient Arise Dragon milling, trying to set up 
I'm not sure. What were they trying to set up? We see Paco Pikachu is already live, so I'm not sure if there's any benefit to this. 1500 on the Dragon Sage does make sure it's able to clear any of my own monsters. They clear two of my monsters, and it's now my move. Any boss monster, and I am able to continue the game. Unfortunately, we draw a pretty awkward looking hand here. Uh, we could clear out the Dragon Sage, but I don't think it is worth it. Um, interestingly, we have a chance to mill multiple cards with Silver Wolf in the future, which could set up the Phoenix Dragon for success. However, I think I do just want to go ahead and throw it face down, keeping the Gazelle for later. I could get in for 200 damage, but it's absolutely not going to be worth it. I do expect them to bring out some additional boss monsters. Oh, and here comes a Dragonic Slayer, who unfortunately is going to destroy that recital. Last turn, I didn't have the chance to use it, and now it is gone. Oh, and we get the lucky draw. Um, They swing into the Magical Ghost and fail to knock it out. My other two monsters, unfortunately, are going down, though. We'd love to see a boss monster here. Um... And that is certainly a great one to see. Um, let's go ahead and bring out Silver Wolf and Silver Wolf. After the effect, we are going to weaken the opposing Silver Wolf. And losing West Red Ruin is definitely not the card we wanted to see milled, but it is fine. Um, we go here. And then with our Multi-Sharcharian Dragius, we are going to be making a play. Let's activate Double Doom and summon out this Gazelle. Unfortunately, we do lose another one of our boss monsters, but no need to be concerned. We are getting in for a big push. Dragius alone takes out both opposing dragons. And we are going to get in for around... 2,000 damage this turn. The one thing we are not great at doing, though, is dealing with spell and trap cards. I don't think we have Rage of the Beast in this list because we made it back before the challenge was issued. Here comes a second Dragonic Slayer. And a Lone Slayer is not super threatening. For sure, they're going to clear out the Silver Wolf because cards like the Barrier uh, are a bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do is force them to have the widespread ruin by using Servant of Dawn and boosting up Gaia. Um. Hmm. I could go for a game winning push here, but it seems a little preemptive. Um. They are almost guaranteed to have some form of a trap card. But we'll see how it goes. If they don't widespread me, um, we're in a good spot. Okay, and they actually let the attack go through. So I am pretty sure they have a barrier. If they had the widespread ruin and a barrier, they absolutely would have used them there to try to block my attacks. Renegade definitely can't just set three cards and pass here, as the existence of my Dragius already on board is going to punish it heavily. All I would need is any low level monster and I would win the game. Phoenix Dragon is coming down. Ancient Arise Dragon would be able to clear one of my bosses. And we know they don't have any Dragias currently on the board. Uh, and they actually toss a Dragias to do it. Which makes me think they had no other way to modify attack in their hand. Getting rid of Dragias is really interesting. Um. Uh. And honestly, if they already had a barrier face down to win the Dragius War, I wonder why they went for it. Okay, and they set a bunch of extra monsters. They are milling one, and I'm going to take just 500 damage. Alright, it's our move. We see a ton of solid cards. Um, very interesting. We have one curry bot in the graveyard. If we go up to 3,100, that's 700 extra damage. 
Hmm. How many warriors? One Gaia. So that would put us at 28, which is only 400. Okay. Ah, okay. So this is gonna look really weird, but it's because I know what Renegade's deck looks like. Um. So Renegade is on Phantom Bind, and I don't wanna put a second Fiend of the Graveyard, as this 3100 is just barely enough for lethal. And even if they have the barrier, um, yeah, they do unfortunately have a barrier. So summoning out the Flame Cerebrus may have been the better play. They are recycling the Phoenix Dragon, which is fair. Oh, they have another one. Okay. 300 life points left. And I am pretty sure their other face down card is without a doubt a phantom bind as they would have already done a um a widespread ruin on multiple different turns we don't want to be decking out that means we only get to play three cards which will be one two and three actually though can we go for game I mean, if it's the barrier. Then I think we should actually go with a reincarnation. Uh, and just bring out the gazelle for a guaranteed push. Um... Uh, Okay, yeah, let's go for it. So, if I messed up and they are not dead to the summon skull attack, I will be a little bit concerned. We know the widespread rune is gone, and we know Phantom Bind is not going to be enough. It's a second barrier, though, so I think Renegade has changed their deck from the last time I spoke to them. So, I'm pretty glad I went for this route. Um... Swing in for 1,500, and we are tied up. All right, so we are moving on to game three, and we're tied up one each in the best of five. We draw, and I think definitely going to try to just clear out our hand a little bit here. Um, set three, and pass it over. We see the immediate Dragius. And a Dragon Sage is going down. I guess they must have better high level or better low level monsters to accompany this Dragius. No, they don't. Could it be a brick? Did Renegade draw three level seven monsters? This could be our big chance to take the lead. Show me any boss monster. And we get quite a good one. Let's flip summon and bring out a gazelle. Then another Silver Wolf to accommodate this, and that Dragius is going to be losing 400 attack. Much like the rest of the games, we are off to a strong start, but as game number one showed us, we can't count Renegade out yet. We do see the Monster Reincarnation, and I'm expecting to see a high level come down, probably for this Dragius, or maybe just a low level. The Dragon Grace, or the Dragon Sage, would make sense too as a way to cycle. All right, so they needed to get rid of a high level monster, which makes sense based on what we know of their hand from last turn. They set two and here comes a second Dragius. However, this is going to be game number three decided in my favor. They might have a 2900, a 2900 attack Dragius, but we have something even better called Widespread Ruin. We activate this, and it should just be game on board. It's my move, and we draw the set five combo. One, two, three, four, and five. Here's another way we can use our skill. My opponent has three set monsters, and Servant of Dawn is able to boost up our tiger. This will put it in range where 
We don't have to fear running into a 1400 defense point monster. We swing in and we know they have something. It is, of course, the widespread ruin and they get us there. So Renegade sets another card and more back row. Looks like they might not have a great push to respond with. And if they use their widespread ruin without having the ability to generate advantage afterwards, they are in trouble. Dragius comes down, but do they have anything to follow it up? Alone Dragius is nice, but I don't think it's going to cut it here. Renegade simply ends turn. I don't think we really have a strong case for using our widespread here. I'd rather keep it for a more important turn. I think. At here, we're able to use a recital. And we have plenty of cards set up for later, so we just let the Cerebrus go down. If we draw a boss monster, we'll be able to bring it out for sure. And here comes a Summon Skull. Pretty interesting. Uh, I think we do go for the Curry Bot, and we'll play the 500 life points as well. Adding Curry Bot to the hand will allow us to reuse it again next turn. Um, or in this case, potentially a different card. As we're going to set a couple of monsters, throw down this face down, and bring out Summon Skull as well. Um, Servant of Dawn boosts up our Summoned Skull here. And there is a pretty interesting decision on which monster we decide to destroy. I do think Dragius is probably the bigger threat, so let's swing into it. It is 100 less damage, but we know we also don't have to worry about Widespread Ruin, so I'm feeling confident in getting rid of Dragius being the right play. Sure, the Ancient Arise Dragon can clear this without any additional buffs, but Silver Wolf was already a buff sitting on the field, and the odds of them not getting any Beast Monsters, a Speedy Performer, or a Dragon Sage is very low, so clearing the double attacker is worth it, for sure. Alright, here comes another Dragius, and having two Dragius on the board is definitely something I wanted to avoid, so I think this is a good play. Here comes another Silver Wolf, this board looking exactly like it did last turn. Here comes the Phoenix Dragon, and Ancient Arise Dragon using the effect. Um... What to go for? I think now Widespread Ruin is definitely worth using as Renegade is getting low in cards and deck. And we know they are running, I believe, two Dragonic Slayers. So having, um... So having Widespread Ruin against a lone... Uh, having Widespread Ruin still on the field when all their remaining boss monsters are Slayers is a huge liability. So Verwolf, funnily enough, not able to hit the Magical Ghost. And we draw once again, not anything particularly strong. Um, we can kind of clear through a barrier here, which is neat. So let's go ahead and bring in the Gazelle and the Silver Wolf, and then Monster Reincarnation. Um, we also want to debuff. So if there's a barrier, we know Summon Skull is going to be more than enough. So we mill one, and we can weaken this. Then we just Reincarnation for Summon Skull, and we get access to another 3100 attacker. Keeping the optimal board presence. Let's go ahead and activate our skill one more time. Um, I'm pretty sure they shouldn't have anything like Music Princess's Recital in the deck, but we are going to clear this Dragius first, just to be completely sure we don't run into anything silly. A barrier here can cause a trade. And they do go for it. And this is going to let them shuffle away one of their boss monsters. Keep in mind, Phoenix Dragon and Dragius were already in the graveyard. So attacking the Dragius here first didn't really change the game plan. They're just going for a low level that they can cycle into a high level if needed. Let's see what they go for. We do start with the Pocket Pocket As I expected. 
Interestingly, I have not drawn any of my own Dragius yet. We see the all-seeing white tiger and Pog Pikachu going back to the bottom of the deck. Summon Skull does actually not die to a Dragius, unless they have a way to buff it. I think I got this on in time. We did. Let's recital. And then they can choose whether or not they want to trade. We do draw a curry bot here, but as we are running low on cards in deck, I am going to pocket pocket chew. We activate the effect, and we will be putting back a pocket chew just like Renegade did. This gives us access to Gazelle. We summon the all seeing white tiger, and Guy the Fierce Knight is up next. One, two. And we can activate our skill, Servant of Dawn, buffing this up. Um, let's set a couple of monsters face down. And then the question is whether or not we summon Gazelle in attack mode. Um, we could potentially try to trade away, but I don't think we really need to, as Renegade only has five cards left in deck. Theoretically, letting them activate the barrier here to shuffle away another monster could be a mistake. I could have not attacked at all and left them without any access to Dragius in the deck, which honestly may have been the better play. Of course, they do only have two cards left in deck, so they are going to need to find a way to finish the game this turn, um, which I don't think they are going to be able to do. And if Renegade does not finish me off this turn... We will be taking home a 3-1 victory. Let's see what kind of random plays Renegade can pull out at the last moment. The Dragorite going to defense mode and setting two. Or, yep, so setting two, giving themselves one more turn. We draw. Interesting. A couple of Dragius should be pretty good. Um, of course, we also don't want to deck ourselves out here, so we could just choose to pass. I do think they do have two Slayers, but something out two Slayers isn't going to be enough to win. Slayer plus Dragius also shouldn't get there. Unless I'm making some kind of crazy error, we should have it. And that is the battle phase. That is game. With a 3-1 victory, Servant of Dawn has proven its superiority over Dragon's Grace. Renegade, I better see you in the comments of this video admitting defeat. Thank you for the games.